and contaminating the cultures they were studying with bacteria. By all accounts, it appears Ben took severe issue with receiving instructions from a woman and became very uncooperative when Catherine tried to teach Ben her techniques. He was informed in no uncertain terms that if he didn't follow strict protocols, he would be kicked out of the group. It doesn't appear that Ben participated in school-related activities during his college years, and he continued to live at home with his parents while attending classes. Classmates recall Ben as being quiet, keeping to himself. No one could say that they remembered Ben being religious, and indeed, he was never hostile. In 1995, Ben graduated with honors from Virginia Tech with a degree in biochemistry. After graduating, Ben was put back into active duty status with the Army and sent to Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio for medical training. He was at Fort Sam for about three months before moving back to Roanoke, which is when he applied for a permit to carry a concealed weapon. On January 2, 1996, Ben was informed that even though he passed the background check, his application was placed on hold because he did not complete a firearms training program, which was a requisite of obtaining the permit. Ben was sent another notice on March 11, 1996, reminding him that the application was on hold. Finally, on March 24, 1996, Ben was granted a certificate of completion from the National Rifle Association for completing a personal protection course. Two weeks later, he presented a photo ID to the local clerk's office and was subsequently granted a license to carry a concealed firearm. In April of 1998, Ben's father died of a heart attack very suddenly at home. Not long after his dad's death, Ben began attending services at the Dar al-Hijra Mosque and Islamic Center. His mother regularly attended with him. The mosque is the same one that an American-born Yemeni cleric would take leadership of as imam in 2001, and then later went on to serve as a spiritual leader to three of the World Trade Center terrorists, who were later found responsible for the 9-11 attacks. This cleric almost immediately became someone that Ben idolized. Ben was never quite the same man after his father died so unexpectedly. Not long after his death, Ben moved into an apartment in Kensington, Maryland, near Washington, D.C., or USUHS, located in Bethesda, Maryland. Only a few months after his dad's death, Ben's mom was diagnosed with cancer. He took leave from medical school so he could move home and care for her. Even while caretaking for his mother, Ben continued to attend the Dal Ahijra Mosque and became determined to memorize the Quran. He became obsessed with Islam and Muslims in American society. The one person, or thing, if you will, that kept Ben somewhat grounded was his mother. Yet she died on Wednesday, May 30th, 2001. Ben no longer had a soul in the world, at least not one he trusted like his parents. Ben wasn't particularly close with his siblings, and after his mom died, Ben moved to a new apartment, presumably to hide from the memories that lingered in a place where he cared for her at her sickest. By this time, Ben's obsession was a complete blown lifestyle conversion. He began wearing the traditional Muslim clothing, including prayer robes. After losing both of his parents, both suddenly, into a long fight with a terminal disease, the 9-11 terrorist attacks occurred. As is the case with almost any and every American, the 9-11 attacks had a considerable impact on Ben, although for very different reasons. Ben graduated in 2003 from USUHS and was promoted to a captain in the Army. His medical internship and residency were done at Walter Reed. Ben also did a fellowship where he worked as a liaison between wounded soldiers and the hospital psychiatry staff. In 2003, Ben had become deeply entrenched into the ideals that the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan were direct assaults against his religion. He considered himself a whole student of the study and practice of Islam and chose to petition the military, requesting an early release. His request was denied. After the denial, Ben offered to repay the military for all his education expenses. The request was rejected again. In the end, it didn't matter to Ben. He no longer cared about medicine. 
His full-time focus was to save each of his Muslim brothers from America. During the internship and residency at Walter Reed, he started becoming much more vocal about his condemnation and dislike of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In fact, there was one occasion that Ben inquired with his classmate if she knew anything about Islam. She replied that she didn't, and Ben proceeded to inform her that she would, quote, burn for eternity in the afterlife. It was during this same residency at Walter Reed that Ben's essential job function was to provide counsel to soldiers who were returning from Iraq and had developed PTSD and treat them. Ben began to preach Islam to his patients, even trying to convert some of them. Later, he was scolded for, quote, inappropriately discussing religious topics with patients. Ben was placed on probation after he failed to attend on the day that he was required to take the United States medical licensing exam. In conjunction, he was not promoted to the third year of residency, though he eventually managed to obtain a medical license. After getting licensed, Ben was admonished for not responding to pages and calls during the nights when he was on call, thereby leaving vulnerable patients unattended. He repeatedly failed to meet his weight requirements, being told that he had too much body fat, and as a result was placed on probation, with a requirement to participate in counseling sessions. Despite the disciplinary measures, Ben's behavior continued a downward spiral. It got to where he was only treating one patient per month. It was reported that Ben exercised poor judgment and lacked professionalism. Worse was his alarming lack of work ethic. His radical ideas continued to escalate, even professionally. In June of 2007, Ben presented a PowerPoint called the Quranic Worldview as it related to Muslims in the U.S. military. The message was about implications of the military Muslims fighting America's wars against other Muslims. This was not the assignment. Other students presented PowerPoints about different medications and various psychiatric illnesses. So when they saw Ben's presentation, they were shocked, to say the least. His views were becoming even more extreme, to the point that an advisor finally indicated that they didn't believe Ben was a good fit for the army and offered to assist him in getting discharged. Ben only agreed to this if he could be honorably discharged, though the advisor was unable to make that type of promise. After his mother died, Ben started to attend the Silver Springs Muslim Community Center in Maryland, attending up to five times per day for prayer. Ben was not social during these visits, keeping only to himself. After the death of his mother and father, he became very religious. He started praying and fasting. It was determined at the same time that Ben became fixated on finding a wife. He even went so far as to ask the leader of the mosque to help him in his quest. The leader offered a marriage service that the mosque provided, and Ben readily agreed. Despite this desire to marry, he reviewed marriage profiles with no woman ever catching his eye. Ben wanted a traditional Muslim wife. After finishing residency, Ben was accepted into a fellowship in the Preventative Disaster Psychiatry Department at USUHS, which began in July of 2007. The program was a two-year term where they trained psychiatrists how to respond to mass casualty incidents. Before long, Ben was back to his old ways. Another faculty member described him as a ticking time bomb, and he was consistently ranked in the lower 25% of his class. Emboldened, or perhaps simply no longer caring who he upset, Ben started to brag about being anti-American, and frequently posted on the internet about his numerous frustrations. His viewpoint had become so warped that Ben believed that any person that did not believe in Islam should be beheaded. In 2008, Ben started to reach out to his former imam, who had fled to Yemen after 9-11, Ben sent no less than 16 emails to the leader over the ensuing months. The leader responded twice. Shockingly, the Joint Terrorist Task Force investigated the emails and labeled them as, quote, not a product of interest. Twice. Ben's emails were long and rambling, spanning the time period from December 2008 to the last message, which was sent May 25, 2009. Ben made a good living, earning around $112,000 per year. He moved into an apartment complex at Fort Hood, 
called Casa del Norte, after he was told that he would be deployed to the Middle East. When he moved in, he signed a six-month lease, paying approximately $350 a month for rent. Ben was quite vocal about his desire that no one was permitted to enter his apartment, not for any reason, not ever. The apartment was modest, about 650 square feet, and sparsely furnished with little furniture or personal belongings. It had a cheap plastic card table with a white tablecloth, some small shelves that held a few books, and a prayer rug in the corner. Ben slept on an air mattress in the bedroom. About two weeks after moving to Colleen, Ben bought a Belgian-made semi-automatic FN 5.7 high-velocity handgun at a local store called Guns Galore. A salesman later recalled Ben coming into the store and requesting the most high-tech gun they had to offer. As the salesman was explaining how to use the firearm, including loading, firing, and cleaning, Ben used his cell phone to videotape, allowing him to study the video later, perfecting each step. The FN-57 is lightweight and easy to conceal, making the firearm of choice for Ben's plans. He had a membership at Stan's shooting range, where he practiced shooting a couple times a week. Ben followed a strict routine each and every day. He left the apartment between 5 and 6 a.m., stopped at the mosque, stopped at 7-Eleven for coffee and hash browns to go, and reported for duty at the Darnell Medical Center where he worked. Ben constantly donned a white Muslim prayer cap that he removed once he entered his office at the center. Because of his faith, Ben did receive some abuse, ranging from being teased to his belongings being vandalized to his car being keyed. Before he was due to be deployed overseas, Ben was expected to take a week-long vacation, visiting relatives in Virginia. Then he was to travel to Fort Benning, Georgia for one month of training and pre-deployment processing. Ben's official pre-deployment was to start on Monday, November 2nd, 2009. However, he didn't go to Virginia. He stayed in Colleen, finalizing plans. Ben was known to whine about not having a wife continuously, yet he willingly refused even to meet a single one presented to him. He sent about $20,000 to $30,000 annually to numerous money laundering operations, funding terrorist organizations, which were designed to appear as Islamic charity groups. On the other hand, neighbors reported that Ben came across as friendly, though he never went out of his way to converse or socialize. However, the staff at the SRP Center were displeased with him because of a scene he caused while refusing to receive his smallpox vaccine, and also, he never did his paperwork accurately. After the shooting, Ben was hospitalized at the Brook Army Medical Center's ICU. He sustained bullet wounds to his spine that caused paralysis from the waist down. He refused to speak with law enforcement. On November 12th, Ben was charged with 12 counts of premeditated murder, and on December 2nd was charged with another 32 counts of attempted murder. Court hearings and proceedings went back and forth for several days. Court hearings and proceedings went back and forth for several years, and finally, on August 6, 2013, a trial commenced, and Ben was permitted to represent himself. Two weeks later, the prosecution rested, and on the following day, Ben rested without calling a single witness or presenting a closing statement. On August 23, 2013, a military jury found Ben guilty of all charges, making him eligible for the death penalty. Deliberations for the death penalty began on August 26, and the victims and their families were able to give testimony. Ben did not offer any statement and did not question a single witness during this hearing. On August 28, 2013, jurors recommended Ben be sentenced to death dismissed from the army, and required to forfeit all military pay. He is currently incarcerated at the United States Disciplinary Barracks at Fort Leavenworth in Kansas. The amount of overall damage cannot ever be measured. For something so appallingly vile, such as this shooting, does not affect only the victims who never returned home. Friends, family, and co-workers of those who were killed are missing their loved ones to an unspeakable violence by one of their own. And still, 
There are some.